When you think of a daily luxury dive watch, what comes to mind? The Submariner, good choice. The Seamaster 300, also an excellent choice. The Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, the OG dive watch. Panerai Submersible, Squale, Pelagos, Zodiac, I could go on. We all have a very clear understanding of what a dive watch looks like. The key, the rotating dive bezel surrounding the dial. But you know what's cooler? An internal dive bezel. I'm here to make the case for dive watches with internal rotating bezels by pitting three watches at three different price points against each other. The Longines Legend Diver, the IWC Aquatimer, the JLC Polaris. Which is better? Well, for diving, external bezel is better. End of story. If you're diving, having access to the bezel easily is vastly preferable to an internal ring, especially when the ring needs to be rotated by a secondary crown. By adding a system to control the internal ring, you are also adding a potential point of failure that you would ideally like to avoid when underwater. It doesn't really matter though. The Sub, 300M, Squales, and all the others are primarily desk drivers. So depth rating, potential points of failure, and so on are not a concern for me. For aesthetics though, the answer isn't so clear cut. The second you remove that ring and make it part of the dial, you make a larger dial. The look of the watch changes completely and potentially you get a watch that can look far more like a dress watch or a smart casual than a rugged traditional diver can. And that's why I think you should consider these kinds of watches. They can be more refined, more elegant and still be dive watches. They're not crazy like a Plo Prof or Deep Sea Challenge. They should be chosen more often as desk divers because of a fundamentally different wearing experience, which brings me to the three watches. The Longines Legend Diver is the relatively speaking affordable watch of the bunch. It comes in 42 or 36 millimeters. The internal ring is controlled by a second crown at the two o'clock position with the normal crown moved to the four o'clock position. It has a date at the three o'clock position. It comes in multiple color configurations and I'm looking at the black one. This one has the faux patina loom in orange and a green on the dial. The dial itself is a flat, deep black. The hands are simple steel. The hour hand is a little unusual with what to me reminds me of a throwing knife. Like I said, an unusual choice. Of the three watches, this watch is the one that by far looks the most like a dress watch. The case is thin at 12.9 millimeters and is rounded. The case is also polished to almost a gloss finish. The watch wears large because of fairly long lugs that have relatively little slope, meaning that they stick out and can make the watch feel a little bit but oversized on medium to smaller wrists. The Aquatimer is the watch in the group that looks most like a dive watch and least like a dress watch. This is down to three elements. First of all, the case is brushed very well, I have to say, with a choice of vertical brushing on the case flags as opposed to the more common lateral brushing. Second, there is an escape valve at the nine o'clock position, which very clearly sends a signal of the watch's utilitarian nature. Finally, IWC has gone for a large bezel, which rotates the inner bezel. This outer bezel is very large and to some extent defeats the purpose of having an internal dive ring because of the need for the external rotating bezel. You have a rotating bezel that rotates another bezel. It's a little bit of a stupid engineering choice. But then again, you get a more balanced and symmetrical look because of the absence of the second crown at the two o'clock position. Then again, there's the escape valve. So it's like six of one, half dozen of another. The watch again is 42 millimeters with a thickness of 14.1 millimeters. It's taller than the two others and by a significant margin over the Longines. But because of the strong downward slope of the lugs, this watch actually will wear better on most wrists than the Longines. The dial is legible. It has no faux patina here, going instead for a matte black dial, applied markers and a green loom on the minute hand and from zero to 15 on the dive bezel. The quality of the finishing compared to the long jeans is clearly a step up, especially in terms of the dial with the applied markers and the hands. My only personal niggle is that the step from the dive ring to the inner dial face is quite significant and does feel a little bit extreme, jarring even. Other party tricks are the new IWC in-house movement with 120 hours of power reserve, anti-magnetic properties, and all other bells and whistles that you'd expect from a high-end watch manufacturer. The JLC Polaris is the expensive boy from the legendary brand Jaeger Lukulta. Most people associate JLC with a Reverso, but this Polaris is quite appealing as well. It's 42 millimeters again, like the two others. It's marginally thinner at 13.92 millimeters compared to the 14 and a bit to the IWC. The case is primarily brushed with lateral brushing, but also applies a gloss beveled polish on the lugs, a gloss thin bezel and a transparent case bag for the movement. The Polaris forgoes the thick IWC style bezel and opts instead for the double crown layout that you also see in the Longines. This gives you a dial with a huge amount of dial space. It's big, it's open, and it's really impressive. And it's the dial that is the clear party piece here. The inner ring is a sunray black, followed by a grained black in the middle ring, and finally a thin dive bezel in opaline black. Simple sword hands with the primary dial having the yellow patina loom and the dive bezel being a simple white. 
applied markers, etc., all the bells and whistles again. This dial is head and shoulders above the two others. JLC really know what they're doing and this is a gorgeous dial. It's clear, legible, balanced, intricate and just plain beautiful. The wearing experience is similar to that of the IWC due to the curved lugs. Yes, it sits high on the wrist, but it fits well on a lot of wrists. This watch looks good and looks premium. At that price, it honestly has to. So which is most worth it? IWC has the most dive watch aesthetic of the bunch and from a technical perspective also the best movement. The long jeans is the watch that looks most like the dress watch because of the thin profile but it is let down for many by the very long lugs. The long jeans would be my second place. I want to like the Aquatimer but it just can't compete on the aesthetic. For me the Aquatimer competes with the Plo Prof visually and if I'm going to be choose between those two I'm going for the Plo Prof. And then there's the Polaris. That's a lot of money for a dive watch. It's got the best style by miles and the wearing experience is superior to the long jeans. There's also a green version of it out there which is just ridiculously good looking if you're willing to wait for it. For me, the most worth it would be the Jaeger. This is the watch that does the dressy, formal, gorgeous best. This is the watch that does it best and you can stare at that dial all day. Next time you're out there looking for a dive watch, try and look at couples that don't have that external bezel. What's your choice? Comment, like, subscribe. Cheers.